In this video, I'm going to show you workflow capabilities of 17 Hacks, HoneyBook, and Auto. Brief overview to show you the different options for automated workflows. Hi, I'm Lainey. I'm Designed by Lainey. I love to teach creative entrepreneurs how to make money. And one of the best ways to do that is by having a streamlined back in through your client management system. These can help you send invoices, contracts, email templates, um, get payments, so many different things. And one of my favorite capabilities is the automated workflows. This can basically take the fact where you go in and send a form with an email to a client, which is already saving you time and money, um, and automate that process entirely so you don't even have to think about it. So let me hop in and show you the different options. Now, if you decide to use any of these three systems, I have links below that will get you discounts on all three of them. I really hope that you'll uh, support me and my channel by using these links and also save a few bucks. It's a win-win. And I have a ton of videos on all three of these systems as well as some others that you can check out on my channel. So just look at the client management playlist. All right, so in Dubsado, you'll go into templates workflow. They are called workflows here in Dubsado. And you'll be able to add one, make the name of it workflow. And then you can automatically put a payment plan on here if you want to. Um, that just means you can trigger uh, workflow actions based on your payment plan installments. This will also automatically add the payment plan to uh, the invoice whenever you activate this workflow if it's not already on there, but you don't necessarily have to do this. So in HoneyBook, we'll go to Tools and Automations, and you'll click New Automation. It takes you right here a little bit quicker. Um, you can't really add that payment plan to it, and then you'll see the system is very different than the other two as far as how you can see things, and I kind of think it's fun. Let me show you what this looks like. So instead of just a list of all the actions, it's a really a visual platform. So far it's linear only. Um, this kind of makes me think that they're eventually going to get like branching capabilities, like conditional logic, which will be if a client takes this action, go this way. If a client takes a different action, go this way. Um, I don't know for sure. And I know that is on Dubsado's roadmap. I don't know about 17 Hats roadmap, uh, but I think that this will be really helpful when we have that because it's just really visual. Whereas in Dubsado, you kind of get this list, which is still helpful. It's great. There's nothing wrong with it, um, but I slightly prefer this one here. In 17 Hats, uh, you'll go into the workflow tab. So it's a little bit easier. Create a template, um, Lamy workflow. And then you can add the actions here. So what all can you add? Here in 17 Hats, you have three options, which is a to-do, um, an action, or you can pause the workflow until you hit complete, uh, until you click to continue it, which I think is pretty good. That's like, it's a good meta workflow action, which I think is good responding to other items in the workflow. And then actions basically include send email, questionnaire, quote, contract, invoice, start a workflow. Um, change the calendar, archive the project, or add and remove tags. I like all of those actions. Those are pretty good actions. Let's see about Dubsado. If we go in here and we try to add an action, we have quite a bit here. Project status, add tags, email, form, to-do list, contract, invoice, um, create invoice, activate and deactivate the portal, pause or hold the workflow until... Um, send appointment schedule, start a workflow and archive project. So really similar between 17 Hots and Dubsado, you have a lot of different actions that you can complete with a workflow. Let's see in HoneyBook, you only have four actions. So flows is something that's in beta right now. It might not be out on all of our accounts by the time this video goes live, but it will actually, in my opinion, it will encapsulate some of those other items like sending contracts, invoices, forms, etc. But of course, you can see there are fewer actions here. We have sending an email, creating a to-do, and sending a file via email. All of those things um, are things you can do in the other systems too. And then the flows, again, it's in beta, so I can't go too much in depth into it. I'll have more videos on it when it's out, but I think it will encapsulate some of the other things. But something that I'll pay attention to here is the ability to um, change up the calendar, archive the project, add, remove tags, or in Dubsado, um, changing the project status and archiving the project. These are things that are kind of meta and you can't really do anything in response to other parts of the workflow within a workflow in HoneyBook. So I would say that 17 Hat and Dubsado both have 
uh, more options that you can do as action. However, I do think that everything that you really need as a beginner workflow or something that I, like my business, I, the only things I really need are sending the emails and files and creating the tasks. So I think that you can do a lot of good stuff here, even with just uh, these four actions that you can do. But of course we have a lot more. And if you're ready to get more robust with it, um, 17 Hats and Dubsado are gonna give you more options. So then after you do this, so let's say we're sending a form over here. Um, we'll select my information questionnaire. I'm a wedding invitation designer. So this is the questionnaire I send out to collect all the information from my clients. And you'll see we can do this however many hours, days, weeks, or years after a trigger or before a trigger. You can do the same things in 17 Hats and HoneyBooks, but let's see what the different triggers are. So here we have after workflow started, before or after the project dates, um, after a form is completed, an invoice installment is paid or the invoice is paid in full, um, after the contract is signed by the client, after all previous actions complete, that's kind of one of those meta actions, and then all the appointment scheduler stuff. So if you use the appointment scheduler, it can automatically send them an email right when the appointment is scheduled to end or an hour after the appointment is scheduled to end saying, hey, thanks for our meeting, here's the follow-up. And then after a form is not completed, I really, really like, I think that's a great trigger. So you can send a reminder to someone, for instance, in this one, if they don't fill this out, I can't start on the proofs. So I love that one. Um, in HoneyBook, let's pretend we're sending this questionnaire. Same one over here. You can choose or create a new email to go with it. And then let's see what triggers we have. So we have after previous step is completed, um, automation is activated project end date or project date, um, contract signed, questionnaire submitted, invoice paid in full, first payment made, project moved to completed, brochure submitted. These are, yeah, brochure and flow completed pretty soon. And then all required signatures signed. So that's something you can't get in either of the other systems is like multiple signatures on the same project. So that's something that's unique about HoneyBook. But these, these are pretty similar. Again, it doesn't have those like meta actions, like all, um, like after the form is not completed, it's not as good, uh, but it does have after the previous step is complete. And in 17 hats, we have when. So basically there's not as many triggers here. So there's a lot of actions in 17 hats, almost as many as there are in Dubsado, um, but there's way fewer triggers. So all you can do is after the workflow before on or after the base date, you can't really do it. Um, after an email is sent or after a form is completed or after the previous actions are complete. So let's say um, two days after completing this workflow, we'll do our template, save, and then we can add another action like sending a quote. And there we get that after all previous items are complete, um, but that's the only one we get. So there's way fewer triggers in Zoni Nuts, even though they have those same generally um, a lot of actions that you can do. And then in HoneyBook, you have a lot of the same triggers, even though you have fewer actions. So kind of the opposite. And then in Dubsado, you kind of have both. So in all three of these, you can require approval before completing the action. So in my invitation information questionnaire, it's got all the different pieces that I might possibly create for you, like with including like rehearsal dinner, uh, reception card, details card, but some of my clients don't need those. So I can go in and make sure I delete those from the questionnaire before I send it over. And that's why I would require approval on something like this. And then you'll have your email template. Um, I like that in Dubsado, you can just update it here. Um, in HoneyBook, you'll be able to kind of preview and edit, uh, but you don't have some of those options like filling in these merge fields. You don't have quite as many formatting options, but you can always go into your email templates, create a template, and then bring it in here very easily um, or write something brand new here, no problem. And then in 17 Hats, let's see what we've got. Uh, so your templates are here and you can do a new email template and you have all of the tokens, which is what they call smart fields or um, other editing features. So I do think um, from an email editing perspective, they're all pretty good there. So I'll just show you the power of workflows and go through this one that I've created for my clients in Dubsado. So what I do here is right after I activate the workflow, um, we activate the portal. This just is a place, I have other videos on portals, a place where they can go and look their files and stuff. Um, I'll send them a proposal immediately after that and then we'll change the project after they sign the contract from a lead to a job. 
So this changing uh, project status moves it through your buckets and you can customize what your buckets are for your business. For instance, for invitation design, you could do, you know, the leads. And then once they're a job, you could have, uh, you know, onboarding, design, production, et cetera, all these different phases you can move them through. And that's something that you can only really do here in Devsado with their workflows. Also in this welcome email, which has some resources, templates, blog posts that will be helpful to them and also introduces them to the portal. Then I'll send this questionnaire. That's something that I have to approve. Um, and then what I'll do with this invitation proof that is kind of unique to Devsado is that you can just apply it to the project only. The proof form is something that I have to customize completely for every single client. So there's no chance. I don't need to even like wait, require approval. I even send a very customized email with every proof form, um, but it's nice to just go ahead and apply it to the project. It saves me like three or four clicks, but those things do add up. And then after they submit that questionnaire, they'll get a thank you reminding them that their proofs are on the way. Once their proofs are approved for print, um, we're in production. And that's the email that basically says, hey, we're in production, you can't change anything anymore. And that saves my butt so much because you'd be surprised how many people think they can sign off, click, you know, yes, this is all approved to print, sign a signature on it, and then still email me two days later with changes. Um, so I love that email and I don't have to think about it at all. Um, and then six weeks after that, we will send an email thanking them. Um, I have this one set to approve because just in case like it's a client where there's been an issue or they're unhappy with the invitations or I feel a weird vibe, um, maybe I don't wanna sign that because I don't necessarily want to work with them on their wedding day stationery, so I won't necessarily send that. And then six weeks after the wedding day, I'll ask for uh, wedding photos and reviews. This is something that I would always forget to do because I never had time. So some people I'd ask them like two days after their wedding and some people I'd ask them like a year after their wedding and some people I forget to ask. Um, so this way, putting in an automation has, um, has the system do it for me. So these three emails that are sending are honestly the things that add the most value, like welcome to the family, provide resources, um, thank you for filling out the form, here's what you've got, we're in production, and then like asking for the wedding photos and reviews. Those are the things that are really moving my business forward. And even though you can't do some of these other things in HoneyBook and 17 Hats, you can put those emails together and up your client experience really easily, even with just a couple actions here in HoneyBook or those same actions and triggers that you have in 17 Hats. So all these systems, um, even though they have slightly different capabilities, are going to save you so much time and energy. And the first thing you should do in any of these systems, no matter what you do, is set up all of your templates, your invoices, your proposals, your projects, all of the, the different things that you can template because those are going to um, make the biggest difference to your business. And then once you're ready and you have all those things created, you can kind of work on this workflow, which is going to uh, give you even less to do. It's just gonna automate those processes and save you three clicks here, five clicks there, seven clicks there, and it's really gonna add up. So I think in my opinion, um, Dubsado is the winner on workflow. Um, you've seen how different these systems can be. So if one is really calling to you, if you really like the look of this one, um, if you've seen some of the videos on our channel, check out the playlist on all of these systems that we have to get to see some different features. There might be other features that you definitely want to use that are game changing features for you. For instance, um, 17 Hats. We love how just like sturdy it is. We love how there's never any issues. Like every once in a while with Dubsado, you have to refresh things or reconnect your email. Those are things that you don't necessarily have to ever do in 17 Hats. Um, HoneyBook has this Chrome extension, which basically brings HoneyBook into your inbox if you use Gmail for your inboxing. So there's a lot of different things that can help make these decisions for you. And if workflow is the most important thing in your business, then I think Dubsado is the clear winner here. But all the systems do have pretty good workflow capabilities. They're just slightly different. So I urge you to check them out as well as some of the other videos on 17 Hats, Delsado, and HoneyBook while you're here on our channel. And if you are gonna decide to use any of these systems, check out their free trials and use the codes in the description of this video so that you can save some money. Thanks everybody for watching and have a great day.